Watch his muscle uh, activity relax because he's got a better base of support and he's got a better trunk. And I'm going to, uh, I'll stand and, and take you on on the issue of spasticity as long as we live because I don't treat it and I don't care about it. I actually treat your child's movement disorder and postural control deficits because they're something that I can access. Olá pessoal, estamos aqui mais uma vez com a Beverly Kuzik, fisioterapeuta conhecida mundialmente, que já veio no Brasil várias vezes, há 10 anos a gente traz a Billy para dar curso, já fizemos mais de 10 cursos no Brasil com mais de 700 profissionais treinados e hoje a gente vai falar um pouquinho sobre espasticidade. Essa palavrinha parece que todo mundo conhece. Todo mundo acha o que, que, que sabe o que, que é espacidade, mas o conceito real da espacidade, o que, que a gente trabalha em, em termos de espacidade no Brasil, está bem, bem errado. E leva a cirurgias, e leva a vários tipos de intercorrências médicas que não necessariamente são positivas para o seu filho. Então eu vou começar perguntando, Billy, what is the... the um, I'm sorry. Corta, mas eu vou falar. Eu <laughs> find it. How we understand spasticity in Brazil and what are the consequences for our kids? Well, I think the way that you understand spasticity in Brazil is the way it's understood around the world and the problem with that worldwide understanding is that it's unclear. Um, I've been studying the issue of spasticity to understand its relevance in cerebral palsy for decades. I have been looking for the definition that makes sense or that explains it. And I've discovered that most of the clinicians in the world think that the definition that was provided by J.W. Lance in 1980, that spasticity is a velocity dependent resistance to stretch, that it's muscle tone that causes, that's, that the stretch reflex causes the uh, velocity dependent resistance to stretch. That when you pull on a muscle quickly, it reacts uh, by contracting that somehow that is spasticity. And the problem with that is that that theory that that is spasticity has never been validated since 1980. But it's not understood, so that means that everybody went along with the theory because it was easier to go along with the theory than it was to actually pursue the issue any further. I've been pursuing it further. And I will tell you that I've found up to 27 authors who cannot put together the idea that when you pull on muscle and it reacts with a contraction, that that idea has anything to do with movement disorder, particularly in cerebral palsy, also in stroke. Uh, it's not substantiated, and I'm sorry that it's so accepted because it is an issue or a definition or a concept that actually is not supported by the sciences. And in the meantime, as a therapist, I have never considered spasticity, thought about it, tried to treat it, tried to reduce it. I've really tried to improve body alignment, improve the base of support, And I've seen enormous changes happen in my children that you might call spasticity reducing. I would call them postural control. It's finally understanding how to use your body. So I tell you that um, the issue of spasticity is poorly supported by the sciences. And yet physicians have been treating spasticity for decades, since 1980, thinking that it's the problem. And the problem with treating spasticity as if it's the problem is that if it's not the problem, they're really not getting very good results. Selective dorsal rhizotomy, long-term results are quite poor. Uh, Botox, long-term results after six months, very poor. Um, that surgery, lots of issues around surgery later on that mean that they didn't improve your child's function or improve his strength. They just maybe kept him at the same level or worse. All of these issues that are, are, are set strategies that are used to intervene to treat spasticity for children with cerebral palsy are usually destructive. They break something, they hurt something, they cut something, they poison tissues. And the Botox itself is actually causing scarring in the tissues mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to go away. The selective dorsal rhizotomy is a permanent cutting of sensory nerves. And the thing that child with cerebral palsy needs the most is good sensation. Uh, so I stand strongly against spasticity interventions because number one, spasticity isn't clearly understood. Number two, it's never been described to cause anything like a deformity or a movement disorder. It's just a concept. And number three, we have better ways, better ways to help your child. And what about everything that you t told us? What will be the real concept of spasticity or how do you... I don't know. And I don't care. 
If, there, if you want to call something spasticity just so you feel like you know what you're talking about, I'll say, I'll challenge you on that. I'm going to call it a postural control deficit. I'm going to give your child functioning alignment. I'm going to give your child good feet to stand on. I'm going to watch his muscle uh, activity relax because he's got a better base of support and he's got a better trunk. And I'm going to, uh, I'll stand and, and take you on on the issue of spasticity as long as we live because I don't treat it and I don't care about it. I actually treat your child's movement disorder and postural control deficits because they're something that I can access. So I, I have one question about um, when we have um, a cross walking or um, hamstrings, um, uh, the muscle is, is, is a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. The doctors call that this is because the spasticity. I know. And you are telling us that it's no it's postural control. We need to organize the kid postural control for them to have a new uh, base of support, have the real correct base of support, and stop using that much that muscles for balance. That's a big piece of it. But also, when you have children more severely involved who are actually scissoring. Mm -hmm. They have more brain damage, and it's probably in the basal ganglia. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, they have that's dystonia. Dystonia is not spasticity. Dystonia is a movement disorder and difficulty organizing your own <clears throat> motor control. And that's not a, a hyperactive stretch reflex. If somebody taps your knee, kneecap and it goes boing, that's spasticity. How could this boing cause scissoring? It doesn't make any sense. So the child with dystonia also needs a good trunk needs to be aligned, needs a good base of support. You could find uh, a videotape from the ABR Institute in Denmark posted on the Theratog's website where a child with real dystonia is actually treated with Theratog. Mm -hmm. And he calms down all over because he needs a body that he can feel, he needs better sensory input, he needs better stability around the hips and trunk, and his, his dystonia reduced. So that's my uh, um, contribution to treating dystonia not to shoot it full of Botox or to cut nerves, but rather to align the child and, and separate. But there's, there's new developments too. There's one in, um, the woman in California is starting to use functional electrical stimulation, mm -hmm. and her results are astonishing. Yeah. Um, she's using it on the thoracic spine as well as on the muscles. Um, she's also breaking through all kinds of new uh, barriers even that I've run into. So I will tell you that knives and needles and poisons are not your resources for cerebral palsy. They are your very last resort because nothing else is working. And uh, about serial casting, now you do like a surgery to on the calf. Mm -hmm. uh, and what is the name of the surgery? Uh, tendon Achilles. They cut the tendon Achilles. Eles cortam o tendão de Achilles para poder te dar mais um, é, um movimento de novo da panturrilha e movimento do pé. E qual seria a melhor tratamento para essa criança? Will be the best treatment for the kids instead of cutting the tendon, Achilles tendon? Well, the best treatment for a child with cerebral palsy who is getting tight in the heel cords is to bring their body weight back onto their heels. So if we use serial casting, it is in order to help the child get a, basics, a big base of support mm -hmm. to put weight through his heels and to learn to carry his body weight back onto his heels because most children with cerebral palsy keep their body weight too far forward. Yeah. So if you carry your body weight forward on your own feet, your heels will come into the air. Everybody does it. So we have to teach these children who are using old-fashioned, immature balancing strategies to keep their body weight back. That will work. If they learn to keep their weight back, it will work. And you may have to cast them a few times to, as, as training because it's training. Mm -hmm. And if I do the surgery, what will be the possible consequences for my, my kid's future? Well, surgeries are permanently weakening. And one of the most important muscles in your body for keeping your legs aligned is the soleus and the gastrocnemius. Mm -hmm. The muscles in the back of your calf do a lot of work to keep you upright. So as soon as you weaken those muscles, there's always a possibility that they will elongate under body weight because the body weight's too strong for them now. The body weight over overwhelms the muscle strength. So the biggest problem with surgeries in the past is that physicians attacked the heel cords with a knife. The child fell into a crouch. They had to go after the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. Heel cords were overlong, the hamstrings are short. They messed, made a big mess because they weakened a very important muscle. All surgery weakens muscle. It all weakens it permanently. So my point about surgery is last resort, no better options. You've tried everything else, and you're sure 
you are sure that the surgery will improve your child's welfare, body alignment, and function for the rest of his life. If you think it's going to help for a year or two, and then they're weak again, only now they're even bigger, you've got even more of a mess. This is the same thing for Botox, I think, because Botox is not a surgery, but it's, it's a toxin that you put on the muscles for the kids to relax that muscle. Mm -hmm. And at this Botox, there is a lot of research right now telling that Botox will do much, much bad things on the future of for this muscle. Stay in talking. Well, the, uh, an article by Fortuna looked at the effects of monthly injections of Botox into the quadriceps of a white rabbit muscle. And every injection left behind scarring. Mm -hmm. It's called fibrosis. The muscle fills with this scar tissue, loses muscle tissue, gains connective tissue, gets weaker and weaker, and it doesn't recover. So this study has actually led Dr. Kerr Graham from Australia to uh, reel back and say, no, 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 we don't do Botox more than once a year now. And I'm telling, I will tell you that once a year causes permanent atrophy. I don't even know why he's going down to once a year. Because another study, whose, the name I can't recall, was done on healthy adult athletes. They were injected with Botox on one calf muscle and not the other. A full year later, they still had atrophy. It was bad. It poisons your muscles in more ways than one. You do not recover, and the tissue itself is damaged, and the muscle is permanently weak. Please don't use Botox. Please say no to Botox. É, infelizmente, Botox, né, hoje em dia, uma, é, virou já um tipo de tratamento muito usado, acho que por grande parte dos, prof, dos profissionais de ortopedia, Eu acho que vocês, pais, já conhecem, né? Muitos já usam o Botox nos seus filhos. E vocês têm que realmente revisar esse uso. Se você pensa no que é a espacidade, que o Botox é usado para a espacidade e que a espacidade, a gente realmente troca essa, o pensamento de espacidade para a base de controle motor, o, que, que, o que, que a gente precisa fazer? O Botox vai dar mais controle motor com o Botox ou com uma cirurgia que é, né, vai ser uma, uma coisa para sempre no seu filho, ele vai ganhar essa, esse controle motor melhor. Então, acho que tem várias outras alternativas que vocês têm que dar uma olhada e conversar com o fisioterapeuta que trabalha com seu filho e, e estudar um pouco mais antes de tomar realmente essas iniciativas tão, tão pesadas e tão, né, que são feitas para sempre. E sobre o que você vai dizer essa... If you could do é, qual é o nome mesmo? Eu vou dar uma, eu quero te dar um conselho. What if you can give them an advice for them about spasticity, postural control, surgeries, botox? What will be your advice? My advice is that those tricks that physicians have to suddenly make a muscle that is tight, weak, for a short period, miss the point that the muscle got short because of where the body weight is carried. So they're not treating postural control, they're treating the muscle as if it's the problem. It's not the problem, it's the consequence of the problem. The real problem is owning your body weight, mm -hmm. owning, pos owning, your, owning your balance, bringing your weight up over your body where it belongs taking your weight through the heel where it belongs. Children at four years of age, when they stand up, carry 60% of their body weight through the heel and only 35 through the metatarsal heads. So if that's the case, it's twice as much weight through the heel as med heads normally. You look at where your children are who have CP and they'll carry 80% or more of their body weight through the front of their foot. That's because their weight is forward. They must bring their weight back. It's a bigger concern. It is the source of the issue. Stop attacking the muscles as if they're the problem. They're the consequence. They're the consequence. They're not treating the problem. Go after the strategy, which is owning your body weight, owning your balance, and bringing your body weight back over your whole foot. Muito obrigada mais uma vez a todos vocês por estarem aqui conosco. Verem mais uma das nossas entrevistas com a, com a Beverly Kuzik. E o que vocês precisarem mais, nós estaremos sempre aqui. É só encontrar em contato com a Fisio Vital se tiverem mais perguntas. Muito obrigada, Billy. Thank you very much again for another interview. I think we're going to do a lot of interviews this week. Uh, it's a very important week for us, for Fisio Vital, and bring you here for the congress that we are going to do. So thank you very much. 
Thank you, too, for all you do for children with cerebral palsy. Thank you.